What's up guys? Welcome back to Self Talk Garage. And as you can tell we're driving, we're in an old truck. And what we're doing is today, well not today, the other day, I went and picked something up or bought something. We're going to pick it up today. Um yeah, I know this window's tinted and the back glass isn't. It's a long story. But I ended up buying a pretty raggedy old trailer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick it up. I got a job coming up, which I'm also gonna film. It's tearing down a building. I needed a small trailer. So I looked around and sorry about the camera shaking. It's on a mount on my windshield. But uh, so I started calling around asking about trailers ended up finding this one really cheap the deck is trash it's a, it's an old boat old boat trailer someone put a uh, flat a flat deck on but it's dual axle it's got 13 claw tires which dual axle means obviously there's two axles four tires um, it's small it's probably I'm gonna say, I don't know, probably four or five foot wide, probably six to eight foot long. It's not huge, but with the dual axle, it's leaf spring, it's dual leaf spring, so it should have a decent gross weight as far as loading it. Um, but before we can use it, the job is probably 65, 75 miles away from where I live. So we're gonna be taking this trailer on the interstate. So before we do that, we need to do a once over on it and get this old thing in road ready condition. I've ordered some lights for it, a lighting kit and marker lights, um, a new receiver, just because this receiver, I'm not a fan. So I'm just gonna get a little bit heavier weight receiver for it. And probably get new tires put on it, make check all the wheel bearings grease everything that we can grease, make sure this deck's good and attached. Uh, the fenders are kind of bent, so we're going to have to bend them back. But, other than that, I guess you're all are going to see, because I'm about to pull in here, and after I talk to this guy, I'll get the camera going, and I'll shoot a little video for y'all. All right. Yeah, you see the dog right there. Little dog running around. Um, <clears throat> so as you can see, it's snowing. But we've got the trailer. Got it to the house now. So, I was going to show y'all. I can't film where I picked it up at. The guy wasn't cool with it, so we didn't do it. So, but anyways, got the trailer picked up. Like I said, it was 100 bucks, and it is an old boat trailer that they put a deck on we're going to change the deck it's not very big like i said it's probably six to eight foot long and probably three or four foot wide it's not huge but anyways we'll get you turned around we'll start letting y'all get a look at this and there it is as you can see the deck is pretty shot there's quite a bit of rod in it and they use some i don't know some of, i call it fence planking little half inch thick boards sitting on top of a looks like a two by 12 or a two by six and some two by threes or a one by three two by three but anyways you can tell the deck shot the trailer condition itself is bad um, the jack works the receivers busted and it's just bolted on which we're going to change that um, we're going to have to take apart the receiver and try to clean up the mechanical aspect of it because it keeps getting stuck. So you have to pry it open to get it on and off. But overall, other than some rust and flaking paint, the framework is in good shape. I checked it with a ball pin hammer. Um, the leaf spring mounts are all good. They're all still there. Um, you can tell that the frame's been repaired right there on that leaf hanger somebody's welded on a new little loop but that's good the tires actually hold air they are very old but they hold air i actually looked for replacements today 
and where I live there are none. The fenders are pretty bent and beat up. You can tell that one's misshapen. Um, our lights are broke. I've ordered some new lights and a wiring kit just to make it easy. And the lights I ordered come with the steel boxes so that way we can protect them. But this is the one wheel that's in question. As you can tell, it's kind of low and it's got some pretty decent cracks on the sidewall. So I'm kind of wondering if that one is going to hold air. But overall, other than just looking rough and being beat up in a few places, it's not in too bad a shape. It's nothing that can't be saved. But as you can see, I don't know if y'all can tell, but the dog has ran away. So I'm going to get this pulled into the garage, go catch the dog, and then we'll get back with you. All right, so, well, so y'all can see, you see that I have the trailer on a jack stand. I've done got it jacked up, which I think I've done that while we were on the time lapse. But just in case, remember, if you jack up anything, it don't matter what it weighs. I'm sure if this I had the tires off and it fell, I could get it back up. It's not that heavy, but just use a jack stand. Don't be a dummy. So what we're going to do now is this back tire isn't, well, it's the one that I showed you all outside and I told you it looks like it's, it may not be good. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fill it with air. Then we're going to take the, uh, we're going to fill it with air. We're going to take the caps off the center, the hub caps there. We're going to take them off. We're going to check the bearings out probably pull the whole hub we're going to pull the tires off as well and we're just going to go over everything and make sure everything's in decent working order yeah this thing's set a very long time and for that reason we are going to do the things we're doing because i've told y'all recently that i have a job coming up and we're going to need the trailer for the job so we just want to make sure everything's in decent shape before before it's time for us to start working. So, here in just a second, I'm gonna be kicking on the air compressor, so it's gonna be loud, but, so here we go. pressure in these tires and then gotta take the kiddo to gymnastics so when we get back from gymnastics we'll check and see if uh, we've lost air pressure we'll make sure they're all still hopefully hold air good right now this one's pressure isn't even reading well, it might have a bad valve in the valve stem Oh, there we go. Yep, it's not even registering on the gauge. I don't know if y'all can see that. And they're supposed to have 40 pounds. All right, 20. Anytime you're putting air in old tires like this, you wanna be careful. There's always the chance that they can blow. All right, we're at about 30 pounds. A little under 40. All right, 40 on the nose. So like I said, we're gonna do this to both tires on this side. And when we get back, we're gonna double check, make sure they're both holding air. And then, We'll just probably get the tires off and start pulling the hubs and checking out the bearings. This tire also isn't even reading the pressure. 
I can hear it popping and making noises. Just doing these two right now. I'll worry about the other side later. Do you need to do anything in the house? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't have anything in there though. <laughs> Alright, shut the door first. Alright, we're almost at 40. And 40 pounds. And just something for y'all to think about. These little gauges are amazing. Cause look, so I still have 60 PSI in my compressor right now. So, I mean, multiple purpose if you ask me. They're just nice overall. You can get them at your local farm supply. And one like this, I believe I got it for 10 bucks. You can catch them on sale pretty much everywhere. But they're overall decent gauges. All right, so gonna take the kids to gymnastics. So I'll be back here in about uh, two hours. So when we get back, we're gonna check, make sure both tires are still holding 40 PSI. Then like I said, we're probably gonna pull off the tires and get to the hubs. We're gonna take the caps off and see how the bearings are. And regardless, good or bad, if they're bad, we're gonna replace the bearings. If they're in decent shape, we're just gonna repack them with grease and go from there. So we'll see y'all here in a couple hours. The door just blew open. Alright. So we're back. I mean, I'm sure you can tell I've already did a little bit of a PB blaster on that. On the lug nuts. Go ahead and get them soaking. Alright. So, like I said before I left, we're gonna check, see how that, what the air pressure stayed. Oh, goodness. All right, so that stayed at 40. I've got the air pressure a little too high in my compressor right now, that's why all this is leaking. All right, I'm gonna check this other tire while I'm here. I know you all can't see that, I'm sorry. All right, this tire actually lost a little bit. It dropped five pounds. So I'm going to let them sit overnight and see if they end up going flat. All right, so now that we've got that done, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pull this tire off the hub. We're going to check them. And we're going to pull the caps off and we're going to see what them bearings look like. I mean, it don't look like they're going to be too bad. But we're still going to go ahead and probably repack them just to be safe, because who knows how long it's been sitting from the looks of it. So. These may have been off sometime recent, even though it looks like they haven't been. Those came off fairly easy. All right. I mean, the hubs aren't making any sounds or anything, so let's hope that's a good sign. I'm sure seen, these wheels have definitely seen better days. All right, I'm going to go get... Uh, 
a hammer and you can use a flathead screwdriver or a punch. You can use about anything you want in order to get those little caps off. I've seen people take them off with pliers, but I don't know. I've always used either a rubber mallet or a hammer and a flathead screwdriver. Now when you take off these caps, you want to try to work around them so you can get them spaced out evenly all the way around. So about a quarter turn per is what I was told per hit. That's just the way I was always told to do it. It's the way I always have done it. Hit it, turn it, hit it again. You get all the way around and you get a little bit of separation you just kind of tap them and I'm, I don't know if y'all can tell or not but you can see it moving just as you tap the head of it you want to alternate sides because when you open it up on one side the other side shuts and it's going to keep doing that until you get it worked off so we're going to stick the screwdriver back in this side and we're just going to kind of pry it out now that we've got it broken loose we're just gonna like i said just keep going around until we can pull it off and as you see grease actually don't look too old in this but you can see that castle nut is almost too loose in my opinion all right so there's always going to be a castle nut and a pin so you want to pull the pin or in this case it's a piece of wire so you just get a pair of pliers. Or you can cut it and replace it. I've done that a lot as well. But just get a oh. Yep, there is a hammer at my feet. I know. But just pull it out. And I roll a thumb, you just stick it with your uh, lug nuts or somewhere else that you know you're not going to forget that it's there. Alright, so now, with your castle nut, you just start walking it off. And remember, be careful when you pull off hubs. Because the thing about these bearings are they can and will fall out. And all that's going to do is get more dirt in a bearing that you're trying to redo. So, I'll... I always like to stick my hand behind it so the rear bearing don't fall out. And then you can kind of put a finger over top of the front and hold that one. So you can kind of see the seals on the back of this one. These are watertight where it's a boat hub. It actually don't look too bad. I mean, they're in there spinning fairly freely. And there's a good amount of grease still left. But you can tell that there's been water in there because it's kind of got that gray color to it. Um, and remember, with your bearings, you're going to have a washer in front of them because that's what your castle nut sits on. Then you're going to have your main roller bearing. And as you can see, your bearing has a race right there. That's what the bearing rides on. If you ever see those are damaged, replacing it with a new bearing isn't going to fix it. You're going to have the same issue in the end if the bearing race is destroyed. It's just going to eat up your new bearing as well. So that's something I always like to check when I'm messing with hubs. And now this back bearing would have to be knocked or pressed out. But all this grease that's in there, we're going to dig the grease out. We're just going to spray that old bearing down with some lube and we're going to start packing more grease back into the hole. Not with lube, we're going to spray it down with some brake clean. Try and get it cleaned up the best we can. So I have a whole box of Walmart brand brake clean here. So what I'm doing is I'm just scooping this grease out right now in globs and just wiping it on the box just to get rid of it. So like I said, I'm gonna be replacing this with high temp uh, marine grease or just marine grease, whatever you wanna call it. And yeah, you just keep working it out until you're ready to get that rear bearing out. 
And this grease is definitely very discolored now that I'm getting it out of here. Some of it's still clean, but there is definitely been water that's gotten in here because the grease has turned black. Or somebody's nuked them at some point and they got them hot. So, that's about as good as it's going to get by hand. So at this point is when I take the brake clean, take it outside, hold it over top of a trash can, whatever you got to do, and you spray it down with the brake clean, and the brake clean will remove the remaining grease. We're just going to take this and start spraying it down. And really the only point of this is to make sure there's no debris stuck in any of the old grease. And it helps clean up the bearings a little better. Helps clean up your water seal or your scrubber is also what they're known to be called. So it cleans up your scrubber, make sure there's no debris in that, make sure you get a good seal on your hub or your axle. And any gunk that was left behind from you and your dirty fingers, etc., will be blown out. Thing with the bearing, you take your bearing. And it's the same way as you pack it. You spray in, the way I do it is you spray the brake clean in from the top. Same as when you pack the grease into it. And then I flip it. And spray from the bottom as well. You just want to remove as much of the old dirt and grime as you can. Another way to do this is you stick them in a part cleaner bath. That's another good way. Let them just soak overnight. Here, I don't know if y'all can see that, but let me see if it'll zoom in. There you go. You see all that gunk built up on the outer ring of this? And that is why we clean them and then pack new grease in. This can's already about empty. Got a lot of it out, because now you can hear the bearings. They're kind of jiggling. Let me get you by the mic. So that means you know you got a lot of the grease out, because the bearings are now free floating around. So at this point, we come back over to the trailer. What we're going to do now is repack it full of grease and get it ready to go back on. At least the one bearing. So, I'm going to peel off the glove here. So what I got to pack the bearings with, it's really all I could find around my area, is premium heavy duty grease. So we're gonna pack the bearings with this, then we're gonna take our pneumatic grease gun and pump the hubs full of marine grease, and then re -put, put them right back on. Um, 
The big thing about these rear bearings, you can knock them out, press them out, but where I don't. All right. The best way to do this is get a socket or something that fits the outside of the bearing. And then you just start tapping the socket until you get it to push the bearing out the other side. Where I don't have a socket big enough, what we're going to do is we're going to take a punch or actually we're probably going to use a long pry bar. It's got a bigger head on it. And we should be able to try to get that to come out. And hope that we do not destroy the bearing. This is what we're going to use, actually. We're going to use a couple extensions. And I'm going to set it over here in the broken part of this trailer floor. And the same concept applies as getting the other one out. You just work your way around until you knock it out of the bottom. And remember, you don't have to hit these like you're trying to break something. You just give them small taps and work your way around until you get it to come out the back side. And this one's already moving. There it is. All right. So once you get it out, you do the same thing. You clean all the grease off of this side. You take your bearing. Then you just clean it up. Spray it down with brake clean. And then you repack them the same way.